Jihad. He's also uh, an associate professor of medicine at Brown University Medical School. And he's also written a number of other books, Sharia versus Freedom, The Legacy of Islamic Totalitarianism. Uh, welcome to the program, Andrew. Thanks for having me on, Sam. I should call you and Dr. Boston, shouldn't I? Oh, thank Bye. you. Happy New Year to you, too. So I want to talk about, first of all, before we get into the subject of Eurabia, Andrew has a new piece up on Breitbart uh, talking about oh, Eurabia. Sam, it's, not, it's not quite up yet. They're still, they're still mulling it over, but it, I hope it will be up soon. <laughs> oh, it will be. It'll be up somewhere <laughs> anyway. Uh, That's right. Okay, my mistake. But in any case, um, uh, see, I get these things ahead of time. <laughs> That's right. I'm prescient that way. Uh, listen, I want to talk to you about what happened in Cologne, what happened in uh, uh, in Germany with these young women who are now being told to just keep arms distance from your attacker. Uh, really, is this the answer that we give to young women who are being uh, assaulted physically and sexually assaulted? The answer that we give them is keep your distance. Uh, the only well, proper answer is here's a gun. Go learn how to use it. Go ahead. Uh, as, no, as, absolutely, Sam. It's it's really a very sad manifestation of this of this conditioning. That's what that's what I reviewed in this in, in the piece that I wrote. That whatever, hopefully, will be out there soon. Which is the the Europeans. Uh, in, in this Faustian bargain, basically, have submitted uh, to the cultures uh, across the Mediterranean Sea, um, the Islamic cultures of North Africa and beyond. And Sam, to get to get a sense of the of the just sheer perversity of this, all you have to do is look at the cover art that I reproduced from something called The Dialogue Between Peoples and Cultures in the Euro-Mediterranean Area. This is a public access document from one of these hodgepodge alphabet soup uh, Euro-Mediterranean organizations. It just just lunacy, but, but reality, too. And the cover document reproduces a middle-aged Arab cartographer's vision of both shores of the Mediterranean Except, Sam, all you have to do, it's very hard to recognize in its, in its orientation, but if you flip it over, you'll see exactly what the, the cartographer did. So that, so that the, 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 the proper orientation, you know, would have Spain facing the Atlantic Ocean, et cetera, et cetera. He flipped it over so, so, that, so that the southern shore is literally, physically on top of the northern shore. And it's just, it's just a manifestation of, of how Islam sees itself superior to all cultures, European culture, etc. But, but, the, but, the, but the, 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 uh, the, the text leading into it says, the orientation of this map corresponds to the worldview of the Arab cartographers of the Middle Ages. But in other words, that's perfectly acceptable in, in 2003 because we've submitted. Wow. It's, just, it's, just, it's just incredible, and and so and so. What I tried to trace very quickly was that the manifestations of this this horrible sexual assault, and and, and there was so there was a knifing, uh, there was all kinds of violence that took place on mass New Year's Eve, and not just in cities in Germany, Cologne in particular, but into Scandinavia. There are reports coming out now all all over the place in Western Europe. Um, the there there were there were astute writers reporting back 25 years ago that things were already going awry, that, that these delusive policies of somehow fusing the cultures on both sides of the Mediterranean were leading to all kinds of problems uh, of integration. And really, uh, you know, my mentor is, a, is an Egyptian Jewess, uh, Batya Or, who's real, that's her pen name, her real name is, is Giselle Littman. She had studied the process of Islamization in the Middle East, particularly as it affected the minorities. She started to write to me, you know, 10 years, 15 years ago now, that, you know, it was very interesting to study this from her perspective as an Egyptian Jew to understand how these populations had been treated over the centuries. She said it was becoming terrifying because it was as if her scholarship on the past, she was now being able to see in real time in a European laboratory. And so she wrote this book called Eurabia. But really, the, the title she got from a journal that was published by 
by uh, people who were promoting this ideology in Europe in the mid-1970s. Sam. In other words, there was actually a journal called Eurabia that, that these promoters of this, of this really dystopian idea uh, had put out very proudly. And, you know, so I, I think what we're seeing now are, uh, are really the, the, the ugly fruits of a long process. And, you know, until we see more politicians like Geert Wilders standing up to this and, and dismantling it, uh, I, I don't see much hope that this is going to get any better. It's only going to get worse. What do you suppose it stems from? The, the uh, normalization of the Islamic culture, which is the antithesis of the Judeo-Christian culture. I mean, really, the antithesis of the Judeo-Christian culture in so many ways. What, what do you... What do you credit as the the motive to normalize this? Why would Merkel be so keen to uh, and and the governor? What would the uh, the mayor of Cologne? I think it was so keen to just say, you know what, folks, this is just the new normal. This is just the way it is. I mean, we've even heard those words here in the United States. Uh, was it uh, Jay Johnson who said, you know, San Bernardino, this is the new normal. We're just going to have to accept terrorism on our within our borders. I, I think this is this is uh, uh, one of the really perfidious uh, characteristics of the whole cultural relativist multicultural uh, idea, um, and it's it's really it's really a form of irrationality. I mean, one of one of the one of the hallmarks of the West has been rational, dispassionate uh, study of of all cultures, um, and th- 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 this mentality. That, that there are no cultural differences, that there are no religious differences, no philosophical differences, um, really turns that idea on its head. It, it, it's basically a rejection of, of, of rationalism. And once you reject rationalism, Sam, um, you, you know, it, anything, anything becomes acceptable. You know, and, and, you, and you make yourself hostage uh, to, to cultures and, and ideologies. And after all, Islam is largely a political ideology. I know people are very loath to come to grips with that reality, but it's the truth. So it's no different than accepting communism on, on, on many levels. Aha. So you've hit upon uh, my thesis, my theory. Uh, it's, to me, it's a rejection of the Judeo-Christian God. And that's Absolutely. all it is. And what's happened is the leftists have discovered that they love totalitarianism uh, as a rejection of God. And so they're joining forces with another totalitarianistic ideology as a way of overcoming the Judeo-Christianity that founded this country and that supported the westernized nations for so long. And so th- there are several ways to attack Christianity, the attack on the family, the attack on the morality, and uh, and this is just a, another sort of uh, uh, what's the battleground that, yeah, and, that we're and, caught and in. To under- and to normalize to it is to betray. Yeah. Go well, ahead. And, and also, and also the the, the idea uh, the idea of Allah is is really, and this was well understood by, you know, again, going back to the age of, of, of rational scholarship, was well understood by, by, by Western scholars of Islam. It, it, Allah is the ultimate uh, autocrat. It, Allah has really very little to do with the Judeo conception uh, of God, a God that can be, you know, communicated with uh, directly and and in the Old and Testament uh, argued with, in the New Testament embodied uh, as 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 a God of love. Um, this is this is antithetical to to the to the Islamic conception of Allah as a as a pure emotionless autocrat to be obeyed. And this, in turn, engenders the totalitarianism that we see in all in all Islamic governments, by and large. Um, so it's it's it, and 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 as you as you were suggesting, this fits in seamlessly with other totalitarian ideologies that have been embraced by the left, such as such as communism, such as national socialism. And again, in fact, you know, two very <laughs> diametrically opposed Western intellectuals. Right at the time that that Bolshevism was emerging, the Christian apologist uh, uh, Ch- Chesterton and the atheist Bertrand Russell 
both felt that Bolshevism was a very clear uh, uh, manifestation of the same conquering ideology, uh, totalitarian ideology, mm -hmm. as Islam. Mm -hmm. Right away, he wrote about this in 1920. Right. And Hitler aligned himself with the Grand Mufti of uh, Jerusalem or something, right? And, and, and going back before even that, uh, uh, Sam, he met with an Indian jihadist in 1926 and was very well versed in the ideology of jihad, to the to the amazement of of this of this Indian jihadist. Yeah, well, birds of a feather, as they say. All right, Andrew Boston, thank you so much for coming on and joining us. Andrew's going to be speaking at the EPC, the Education Policy Conference, at the end of this month. Uh, it's a conference that I go to every year. I cannot recommend it highly enough. Do yourself a favor. If any of the stuff, if you listen to this show then you're interested in this stuff. The conference at the end of this month is it will it will uh, make your heart lighter and it will inform you and make you feel awesome but just by going. They cover everything uh, and Andrew Boston will be speaking there. Thanks Andrew for coming on the show. I will be back after a quick break. Don't go anywhere.